So let's work a problem in one-dimensional heat conduction. So I'm going to have a one-dimensional wall of length L. Uh, my coordinate direction X is going to go from left to right. On this side, I'm going to hold some fluid at a hot temperature with a convection coefficient H. On this side, I have a fluid with a cold temperature and a convection coefficient also H, just for simplicity. And my solid is between these two regions. So I have the heat equation, which describes the evolution of the temperature field of the solid between uh, X equals to zero and X equals to L. And my solid has properties, material properties, alpha, the thermal diffusivity, and K, the thermal conductivity. Now to express this problem mathematically, I need to express the initial condition and the boundary conditions. So the initial condition, let's just assume that initially at time equals zero, the temperature is L at the cold temperature. We could assume something else, but that's what we'll do here. And now I need two boundary conditions. And in the two boundary conditions, I'll need to equate right here at the boundary, the heat flux from the fluid to the solid by convection. And that has to equal the heat flux by conduction into the solid. And that has to be true at both the left and the right. So let me write those conditions down. So I'll write them as that. So the, con the heat flux by convection has to equal the heat flux by conduction at x equals to zero and L. And we need to be a little bit careful of the sign, so let's check to, check to make sure we got it right. Uh, we expect that the, the temperature of the wall at x equals to zero will be a little bit colder at least than T hot, so this will be a negative number, which means our temperature gradient should be negative, falling from hot to cold, so that looks good. Here we expect T at this point to be a little bit higher than the fluid temperature, so this will be a positive number. And now we've got the gradient of the temperature being negative, canceling that negative, so the signs of this look correct. Now let's express this equation in the boundary condition in dimensionless form. So let's write our equation in dimensionless form. If you remember, all we do is a simple change of variables. So I'm going to change my x-coordinate from something measured in meters. I'm going to divide it by the length of the domain and express that as x-twiddle. So I'm changing the units of x to x-twiddle. And I'm going to make my domain, this will make my domain now extend from 0 to 1. I'm going to define a new coordinate for time, or a new unit of time, to be t twiddle divided by the time in seconds divided by some reference temperature t naught. And I'm going to define, as before, a temperature function, which will be dimensionless. And it'll be defined as follows. And this function, again, has a nice property that when the temperature reaches the coldest temperature in the system, t twiddle is 0. When the temperature reaches the hottest temperature in the system, t twiddle is 1. So let me just substitute this into the equation and boundary conditions and see what we get. So I'm just making a substitution for my uh, dimensional variables for my dimension list ones, so regular variables to twiddles. Anything that's a constant can be pulled out of the derivative operator. And here I'm taking the derivative of temperature plus a constant and the second derivative of temperature plus a constant. So those constants are going to go away because when I take the derivative of constants, right, it just turns out to be zero. So let me pull all the constants out. So I just pull all the constants out. When I get to this step here, I see that t naught is just some constant. It was arbitrary before, so I'm going to define it arbitrarily to be L squared over alpha. So this parameter becomes 1. So my equation is simplified to 1 with no constants. Now let's do the boundary conditions.
So there's my two boundary conditions in dimensionless form. I have the, it's giving me the slope at the boundary. So this is at x, equal, x twiddle is equal to one. This is at x twiddle is equal to zero. And I have the slope being the, the BO number, HL over K times T twiddle minus one at x equals to zero. And here I have a similar condition at x equals to one. So now let's solve this problem at steady state. Okay, let's write out our problem in dimensionless form. So there is my equation and my two boundary conditions. This one's at x equals to zero. This one is at x equals to one. Okay, so we're gonna solve this problem at steady state. At steady state, the time derivative of the temperature field is zero. That means the second derivative is zero. So at steady state, the temperature field is going to be linear. Now from here on out, let me drop the twiddles uh, just because they get annoying to carry around. So from now on, I'm just gonna drop the twiddle notation and we'll just note, remember that we're assuming everything from now on is dimensionless, so. So the temperature field, if it's linear, has to have a form like this. When an x is equal to zero, I'm the temperature at zero. When x is equal to one, this gives me the temperature at one, and it's linear. That means the temperature gradient is just the temperature difference between one and zero. Uh, and this temperature gradient is negative because one will always be colder than zero. Because you remember the, the left was hot, the right was cold. So now let's plug this temperature gradient into our boundary condition, and that will give us two equations for two unknowns. So there's our two equations for two unknowns. So now we just need to solve that and find out what t at x equals to one and t at zero is. So here again, I'm just using the subscript zero to mean t at x equals to zero, uh, just because that makes our notation a little bit more compact. So I'll call this equation one and this equation two. So from equation two, so we have two equations, we, now we have two unknowns, our temperature at zero and our temperature at one. So let's just solve those. So let's start with equation two. We can simply rearrange that. Now let's move on to equation one. So we're left with the temperature at one and zero as being one over two plus the BO number and one plus the BO number of two plus the BO number. So let's uh, think about what this means. Let's make a little table. So um, the BO number is close to zero, then T1 is a half, T0 is a half. If the BO number is something like infinity, then T1 is zero t0 is 1. And if the BO number is uh, exactly 1, then this is a third and two thirds. So um, if we think about what this means, it means that when the BO number is 0, which corresponds to, remember, the BO number is H L over K. So when the BO number is close to 0, it means K, or the conductivity is very large and the material is very thin. So that kind of makes sense then that we have this thin piece of aluminum foil separating hot and cold, so it's just the temperature, it's just the average temperature separating those two regions. When the BO number is infinity, that corresponds to the material being a very good insulator, so therefore the temperature at the walls is the temperature of the fluid. And when the BO number is one, we have the temperature drop is a third, a third, a third. So we have the same temperature drop across from the hot air to the wall, across the wall, and the wall to the cold air. And finally, we can think about this problem using our resistor analogy. So we have the resistance of the wall bounded by the resistance of the air on either side, the hot temperature here, the cold temperature here. So at steady state, all the heat flow of the current is gonna go from left to right. Um, 
if we think about it, the BO number is nothing more than the ratio of our wall resistance by conduction to the air resistance by convection. So BO number much, much greater than one means that the conduction resistance is much greater than the air resistance. And what that corresponds to in our circuit analogy is this is the largest resistor. These are small resistors. So therefore, all the voltage drop or temperature drop is across the wall. So therefore, this temperature and this temperature are close to the, to the hot temperature and the cold temperature, respectively. So there's very little voltage drop across here, very little voltage drop across that resistor. And the BO number is much, much less than one. This is a small resistor. And those two resistors are large, so the temperature here and the temperature here, or the voltage here and the voltage here, is just the midpoint. So it's a half, just like our equation said. And when the BO number is equal to one, these three resistors are equal, so our uh, voltage or temperature drop is a third, a third, a third, just like our equation said. Pretty awesome, right?